Hi, I'm Jen from House One, and today I'm showing how to build cabinets around an existing fireplace and mantle for a custom built-in look. The fireplace wall in our new home is the main focal point of our open living kitchen and family room. But because it's sandwiched between the opening to the dining room and a wall of windows, it creates an awkward layout for the television and seating. To give it a purpose and de-emphasize the uncentered fireplace, we're doing a full wall of built-ins that will house the television, hide cords, and create a beautiful fogo point for the space. And because we want the quality of these built-ins to match the integrity of our home, we're teaming up with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods to use the finest materials for the job. Now I'm lucky to have Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods right here in my backyard in Ohio but their family-owned facility offers shipment of their fine hardwood products nationwide. And they're setting me up with some really high quality cabinet grade birch plywood and hard maple boards to build this project. In part one of this project, I removed and updated the mantle with new molding, demoed the tile around the fireplace, and replaced it with new marble mosaic and subway tile. To watch the videos showing those parts of the process, click the links below this video. To get started on the built-ins, I ripped 3 quarter inch plywood into 16 inch wide strips and then cut them to length to create the sides, shelves, and cabinet dividers. I then prepped the ends of the shelves and top edge of each divider for assembly by drilling pocket holes. Because my cabinets are 9 feet high, I also use pocket holes to add another foot to the height of each cabinet side. To fill the pocket holes, I used wood glue and plugs which I then trimmed with a flush cut saw and sanded smooth. For the less noticeable pocket holes, I used wood filler. With my large pieces cut, I stacked the cabinet sides, measured from the bottom edge, and marked the height of the shelves. I also carried this mark into a line on the inside walls of the cabinets, so I can keep the shelves level front to back during assembly. I could now lay out the pieces with the shelving sitting between the sides. Assembling large pieces like this and keeping them square can be difficult. I recommend working on a flat surface and using corner clamps to keep connections square. To use a corner clamp, I set the side of the cabinet into the clamp, applied glue to the end of the shelf, positioned the shelf into the clamp, and then adjusted the placement. I also used a pocket hole right angle clamp to keep the front edge of the board in place and then screwed the pieces together. With one side of each shelf attached, I applied wood glue to the opposing edge of each shelf and tipped the remaining cabinet side into place. At this point, I added a few supports along the bottom of each cabinet and nailers for the crown molding along the top. I measured and marked the lines for the vertical cabinet dividers and then placed the dividers. I used pocket holes to attach the top edge of each divider and marked and screwed through the bottom of the cabinet to secure the bottom edge of each divider. Because my built-ins are so wide, I also attached a 1x2 on edge below each shelf to help carry the weight of the long shelves. For additional support, I'll also screw through these boards and into the studs in my wall. Now that combined with the support of the face frames, which are also on edge, should really help carry the weight through the center of these longer shelves. Next, I laid the quarter inch plywood backs onto the assemblies and trimmed them using a router fitted with a flush cut bit. Now, you could also use a jigsaw or a table saw to size these panels, but I found that this was the easiest way for me to make the cut. And because I know the sides of my cabinet are going to be hidden by the adjoining walls on the outside and the TV panel on the inside, there's no reason for me to inset this panel, so it was a pretty straightforward cut. With my panels sized, I slid them to the side marked the placement of each shelf, and then nailed them into place through the back edge of the shelves and cabinet walls. I could now turn my attention to assembling the face frames. The folks at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods supplied me with really nice maple lumber that was free from any bows or twists. So it made assembling these one by two face frames that would cover the front edge of the cabinet much easier. I prepped all the face frame pieces by cutting them to size and then drilling pocket holes in all the horizontal pieces. I then rested the pieces face down on the cabinet and glued and screwed them together. I would have preferred to place them on a flat surface, but these are big assemblies and I was officially out of working space at this point. 
I then flip the face frames over to check their fit. With all the major assembly work complete, I enlisted help to flip each unit on its side so I could give them a few coats of paint. As a last bit of prep, I cut recesses for the electrical boxes and installed furring strips over the studs on the walls to create a cavity for me to run the wires to the new television and to act as the nailer I mentioned for the shelves. It was the moment of truth as the cabinets came into the house and tipped up against the walls. Luckily, they fit great and I was able to bump them against the mantel and screw them into place through the furring strips. I tipped the face frames up and nailed them into place and then added baseboard. After running all the cords and wires, I added the center panel and television mount. I then topped it all off with the beautiful hardwood crown molding. Lastly, I installed the maple shaker doors, custom built by Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, to finish the cabinets and complete the new built-in accent wall. It's hard to imagine that this wall turned into this space but we're thrilled with the new form and function of our room. I hope you enjoyed this project. For more DIY and building tutorials, visit House One. And to learn more about the quality materials I use to build this project, visit BairdBrothers.com. I'm Jen Largis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.